I think the best player in Fnatic at the moment is Huni because his champion pool is high enough to threaten uh, that people need to ban him out. Like in the, in the semi finals versus H2K, five top players were banned in total, and Huni was forced to play some like other picks that he wasn't that comfortable on. And I think he's like a really skilled player and gives like confidence to his team if he's the one making the plays. Welcome back to the LCS Spring Championship Final between Fnatic and the Unicorns of Love. We just heard Kick is talking about Huni and his ability yeah. to impact the game. Let's not give him Hecarim After again. After he was given Hecarim and just rampaged across the OL. I think we're going to see uh, Unicorns of Love go back to the standard bands for them in the first two games. LeBlanc, uh, Zed taken away, then Hecarim as well. Unless they want a first pick, and Visichachi does play Hecarim top lane and he's pretty good at it. So it could be a first pick for them. Because Fnatic will obviously not think about banning it as they want to try and secure it on, on, on the blue side, well, purple we, side. We did not see Power of Evil Syndra really get going at all. It's true. Not the same sort of lane control that we're used to seeing. Yeah. We also, again, did not see Hillisang on Thresh really living up again. It's a little unfair because the team fell behind as we touched on in the previous pick and ban. This time around, blue side for Unicorns of Love. If they go back, what do they prioritize as first pick? Well, what we got to look at here and what Fnatic has done in the last two games is always draft a lot of engage early on. So that tells Unicorns of Love, you cannot run your, your immobile mid laners that focus on poking because we can always force team fights on you. It was the Rumble, Twisted Fate and Nautilus combination in game two. Now Hecarim first pick in this one in the last game. So they always make sure they get enough engage to stop that poke from coming in. And without that, Unicorns don't really seem to have anything ready unless they're going to pull out something completely different now because it's a must-win game. And for a team who's known for pulling out different picks, this is the time to do it if you want to surprise Fnatic. One game potentially away from Fnatic being crowned the Spring Split champion yeah. and getting themselves 90 championship points towards Worlds and booking their ticket to Florida to do battle at MSI. Uh, the first team on stage was Unicorns of Love. The crowd was cheering. They came back after the break and they sat down. We need to see what they decide to lock in. We heard from the previous game, they adapt. Their adaptation from game two to game three failed. And I wonder what kind of damage that's going to do to their mindset. So now that you know Fnatic is running these comps that has enough engaged that you can't pull off your siege strategy, honestly, I would first pick the Hecarim. I would ban Zed LeBlanc and then I would consider, okay, is that jungle ban we have to get rid of? Is it the Gragas maybe or do we want to continue banning Rek'Sai just to do it? Sivir could be another ban. It's been very good in the hands of Fnatic yeah. whenever they played it and then you first pick that Hecarim. So you now run this style of very hard engage in the mid game and you try and simply play Fnatic's game and you try and match it and not be in that situation where you rely on getting to a certain point in the game before you can really fight. So that could be an adaptation for them. But it really depends on what the team want to pull up because we can never really predict the Unicorns of Love and their pick and ban strategies. Well, we are about to find out. You can see some of this trophy here for the spring split. So Listening, okay. and it's going to go back Not to the original the plan. Pick. No changes here for Fnatic and first pick okay. Sivir. So again, it was one of the options you touched on, yeah. Fischio. Where did Fnatic go from here? Well, Thresh, if they want to secure that one, even though they were happy giving it over to the Unicorns of Love, that was when they could get Syria and Nautilus as a combo from Fnatic's side. Otherwise, I mean, you got the Rumble open in the top lane for Huni, so you can still run this backline snipe with Nautilus Rumble. Together, Twisted Fate is there. I mean, there's a lot of options for Fnatic. It's not a massive problem, but I do think it's a very good first pick for Unicorns of Love, as Syria has been so good at forcing these fights and also kiting back, honestly, if that's the comp you're trying to build. But Fnatic needs to make sure they have enough tools to dive that backline of Unicorns of Love. Otherwise, we're going to see the virus coming in once again, potentially. 10 seconds left on the clock. Fnatic hovering over a champion that was banned all throughout the semi-finals. Freddy has run that smite teleport Shivana top. And I'm not entirely sold, but We'll see whether or not Huni can do better with Shivana than he did with Lee Sin. There is some of the engage, disengage tools from the Gragas and the ability to dive the back line from Shivana. Sure, but not the same kind. And if Hillisang plays Janna, this is the time to pull it out. And then you can run your poke composition because Shivana, the way she has to engage is from the flank, jumping with her ulti. That's very predictable. And as a Janna, when you pop your Monsoon, you 
throw that Shivana away and you start kiting around and she never really does a whole lot in those fights. It's gonna be more about the Gragas than with his ulti. Land that, land that one correctly. So if Unicorns does play Janna, this will be one of the time to do it. Unless they wanna run an all-in composition themselves, then you can still go back to that Thresh. You can go for Leona, which has been a pick for Hillisang as well during, this, during the split. And maybe an assassin once again in the mid lane for uh, for power of evil i think it's so important that you do talk about Hillisang on that support he's the only member of unicorns of love that you can say has a smaller champion pool everybody else has consistently shown new picks we will see sejuani for the first time this series i mean all in common pick us in the jungle maokai up top with morgana banned away it opens up that very very point and click easy engage who do they round out their team comp with as far as supports go well, on Unicorns? Because Fnatic could run Janna themselves. They could run Janna. Now that they see what Unicorns yep. are building with so much engage, and you can start playing around Shivana being so good in split push. She's a bit of a counter pick when it comes to winning the one-on-one -on -one against Maokai in that sense. So if you run a lot of disengage on your side, you set up that 1-3-1, one, one, and you just let Huni go crazy with the Cinderhawk and just let him do all the work. And that's exactly what Fnatic decides to do if they lock in this Janna. And then you have that fast pushing ability of the Jinx, which means whenever Unicorns have to send two guys to try and stop the Shivana, Jinx will get time to hit a tower and just melt it in a matter of seconds. So Fnatic, Really building a comp here that's relying on Shivana getting ahead and also the assassin pick we expect in the mid lane from Fivivan to be able to sit in the other side lane. And then you have Gragas, Jinx, Janna together. That's so much disengage for an immobile AD carry and so much pressure on a tower. Unicorns of Love need something here that can battle Fivivan in the side lanes or they need enough engage to just always force fights and never allow Fnatic to 1v1. That could be another tool for them. They have already the, the options with Sejuani, with Maokai, with Sivir here, they just need damage, honestly, at this point to be able to just pop the likes off a Jinx and force Fnatic back from the 1-3-1s. We'll find out if Unicorns do lock in that damage source. Steal back, the only hyper carry he has played has been Jinx. This will be the second time this year. Yellow Star has got a fantastic win loss on Janna. Five wins, one loss. And we'll see whether or not he can continue to disengage against the Unicorns of Love. We had anticipated and theory crafted what Hillisang would lock in. He's going to stick with Thresh. He needs to make those death sentences count. Unicorns, yeah. a lot of engaged. They do have some scaling in Oriana. And some decent mid game with right. the Siva, Maokai, Sejuani. They've got a jack of all trades team composition. They can pick, they can team fight, they can wave clear. The only thing they can't do is stop a split pusher. Maokai is not going to do anything against Shivana. Oriana is not going to move to a side lane either and sit and fight against whatever assassin we we assume is coming from Febivan. So Fnatic don't really care too much as long as they can avoid Unicorns engaging. But that's going to be the big deal because in a straight up 5-on-5 five five team fight, Unicorns of Love are looking very, very strong. They got great scaling with double tank. Oriana in the late game, even Sivir has good damage in the later stages of the game. So they are drafted a very good 5-on-5 five five comp. It's going to need time to scale at first, and then it's going to rely on Fnatic not starting applying pressure on the side lanes. Last few seconds on the clock, and Febivin will once again run the Cassidy. It did not result in a victory in the very first game of this series, but Fnatic 2 have a lot of late game damage. Yeah, and also good team fight from them. Their Thien's build on Cassidy makes him very, very strong once it's completed in the fight, especially if you start poking down targets. You can almost count it as a reset for Cassidy by getting a kill on assist will get him mana back. Same goes for the Jinx getting proc her passive. So for Fnatic here, if they manage to kite back at first when the main engage comes from the Unicorns of Love, we're talking five on five here, and then just slowly poke them down and see one quick kill, you reset both the AD carry and the Cassidy. And that's where they simply start chasing against the Unicorns and you won't be able to escape. So it's gonna be very important the first engage coming in from the Unicorns of Love that it counts, and that also this Shivana doesn't get to just run a mock in the one-on-one -on -one situation and take over your jungle, which is what she can do if she's left on her own. Well, Huni has to do with Shivana what he was unable to do with Lee Sin. Any other person that really tried that Shivana top was Freddy from SK, and he was knocked out yeah. yesterday. Lost within the semifinals. I, I, I'm still not entirely sold, but we'll need to see if it works out. I know Dentist touched on the analyst desk yesterday as well. 
the impact of that challenging smite is so seldom seen. These are your team comps for potentially the last time in the European Spring Split Finals from Madrid, Spain. The unicorns of love have their backs against the wall. And we will see if they can contain Fnatic's very, very scary scaling team composition. Both teams really looking for the late game. Just a few more options for Fnatic in the way they can play out this game with the likes of Shivana top and a skirmisher Saber. Cassid in as well in a one on one. Once he gets going, it can be very difficult to deal with. So Fnatic definitely has a few more options. But Unicorns of Love, it's very simple. It's five on five team fighting. It's going to be about putting pressure on towers because there's a very low amount of wave flare from Fnatic. Static shift comes in from, from the Jinx, and that's going to be the main thing, honestly. And her rockets, the Kassadin, it's just not reliable enough when you have to sit close in melee range to clear out these minions with your force pulls. So that's where Unicorns of Love does have an edge. And if the early game does go in their favor, they can really take advantage of it. They like to use Vardax as one of these fast pushers on Sivir. So once he takes his own bottom lane tower, they quickly rotate him to the top of mid lane and go for another one. They don't just leave him in a lane to sit and farm. They use him to get a global goal, a global advantage. We'll find out if they can get those advantages to Fisher. We do see Bizachachi starting out with that traditional sapling start near the Razorbeak camp. And I know it's very early in the game, but I do want to remind everybody Power of Evil's Oriana is the reason Unicorns of Love are in the finals. In game five against SK, he stole that Baron with a well-timed shockwave. And he will need to replicate that oh, level of them. performance. Not sure if they saw Huni at all. And now Hillisang is spotting them, seeing they're trying to steal a blue buff, and they're gonna match the swap here from Fnatic and get the 2v2 lane. Huni still does not want to let this blue buff go. He has Smite, remember? And with yellow side there, he should. Oh, oh it just reset. That reset for him. continues to reset. There's an example of that uh, soft leash cap. Five times Five you time. can pull it out before it decides to go yeah, back that's and enough. chill. Now keep in mind, um, when Huni was playing Lee Sin, he had a number of very good early game starts. This time around, it's been thwarted. Yeah, this is a very bad thing for him because we saw the Maokai do the Raptor Cam and get level two. So Huni's going to teleport down, being a level behind and not gain any advantage from the early game. And on top of that, we're going to see Kikis move over to his blue buff, considering he's got his duo up top. Should be able to secure that one as well. Yeah, so just Kikis, a standard route for him. Nothing too out of the ordinary. We'll see how well Huni can bring himself back in. Look at that bottom lane. 12 to 0 and the level advantage. Huni going to have a difficult time against an opponent who's two lanes above. I'm going to have to wait for the minion to hit his tower before he gets anything. At all, Rainover has done a very good job with his early ganks, even on the likes of Akragas, who of course has so much CC. Now he's gonna force at least a flash up here, yeah. but everything goes correctly. Kikis is gonna be late to this one. Rainover is low, but it doesn't matter. Hillisang is gonna be forced to flash in a moment. 100 hit points as he goes back. Now Kikis has joined the fight. Bardax at a lot of HP. Kikis flash for flash. Trades with steel back and summoner spells blown. It is a jungle plus support from UOL and a jungle plus AD carry from Fnatic. We'll see whether or not Steelback can be punished for not having that utility or that mobility summon a spell. Yeah, definitely hurt Steelback quite a lot. And also because he took some, at least a little bit of damage from this trade, the wave was already pushing down to his tower. He is slightly behind in CS, which honestly is standard for the Fnatic dual lane, but so is it for Vardax. It's two of the dual lanes who's not been doing well in terms of farming in, if we look at the other games they've played in the ULCS. But they've always showed up, especially the AD carries, when it comes to team fights and cleaning house. That's really where they have shined, both of them. They, they have, and, and Steelback has improved in the playoffs thanks to the fact that Huni's struggled with all those bans in the semi-final. But something I touched on in PTL is the fact that Steelback and Vardax were ninth and 10th in the LCS for damage dealt for your respective team. These are two guys that are oftentimes carried through the early stages of the game by their supports. And then as you've rightly touched on, and as we've said many, many times all split, it is their team fight positioning that allows them to play the janitor role. Cleaning house from whatever mess their solo laners and junglers seem to have created. 
Yeah, let's look at the rest of the map here. Harvey Evil had a knock for his Chalice. No real surprise for him, and he's not really able to get much of a CS lead against a Kassan with Flask and three potions. It's just going to be a bit of a farm fest, but where you know that Kassan is going to sit under his own towers. He doesn't really have any pressure on any lanes, but with double Cinder Hole Jungler, that doesn't do a whole lot for them, and Unicorns can't really take too much advantage of it. Therefore, we have some sort of a passive farming early game where it's about the junglers and where they decide to gank. Second one for Rainover's in the bottom lane. I really like that play. Huni stepping on the sapling. Make sure Rainover can get in safe, but I don't know if Chachi's going to push up far enough. Body slam, I don't think it connected with Chachi. Hit the melee minions, and this is Chachi's going to be able to back away. And healing from his passive, healing him up. Play lands on the death sentence. The de uh, play pulls him back. The death sentence does not connect. Ardex will take a couple auto attacks from Steel back. And at the end of the day, the trade seems to be relatively even. Yellow Star's running low on mana. Yeah, but you also have to look at what they have left here. Potions, Potion is still there for Bardax. So he can keep ta taking some trades with the Jinx. And even though he maybe slightly loses it, he has the Potion then to get HP back. And that's going to force Steelbike back to his. What they're trying to do is get him to back before he has a BF Sword. And that worked, because he's oh, recalling no. now. Look at this. This could be two on one. Feverman does have Rift Wolf, though, and Flash. Be able to take some damage. Power of Evil holding on to the Shockwave. That looks like he manages to kill that Razor Beak. Kick this is going to clear out the ward, thanks to the buff. Very good advantage, though, for Unicorns of Love in that 2v2 lane, because now they have enough gold on Vardex to get that BF sword to just a pickaxe from Steelpack. So once they go back to the 2v2 lane, once they see them on the bottom side, they're going to go down and meet them. They can push that one in. And as we talked about, Unicorns of Love like to use Vardex once he gets an early tower to quickly rotate in between the lanes and just keep pushing them in. Kassadin does not have any way of defending his tower against three guys. So if Unicorns of Love put a lot of focus on the bottom side where they will be stronger due to this BF sword on Vardax, they can get down that tower and then get to the mid lane. And that's how they want to create the lead, which they so desperately, or not desperately, yeah, honestly, they have a good comp, which they want. They want. I, actually, you know what? I think it's fair to say desperate because they're one game away sure, from sure. being eliminated from the playoffs. But I do want to just highlight again, Hillisung landing that death sentence before Rainover came into gank. How impactful that has been. Even in a 3v2, you know, some of the spells were blown. Steelback and Yellowstar unable to get that early kill. Yellowstar has bought time for Vardax to farm himself up to now the AD damage advantage. Huni with an aggressive invade. He's gonna smite away that wolf camp, something that you can do and consistently will see him doing. Yeah. With that top lane Shivana. He's also expecting Kickers to be on the bottom side of the map with that dual lane. Also has so many early wards, so they have pretty good information on the jungler. Also, smiting the wolves gives them that extra vision in the jungle against the Unicorns of Love. He's still behind in CS. This is all from level 1. But he was yeah. denied that blue buff, TP down as level 1, and already fallen like 6 to 7 CS behind. Some of them were the small Raptors for, for Visichachi. And now Vardax and Hillisang, as expected, already pushing in. Get some damage on this tower every single time. What Hillison can do then, just position himself slightly behind Vardax, and in case a gank happens, you can always land on him and just pull him to safety. And then you can get a few hits every time. And here's Kikis as well. We did see Yellow Star just dodge that death sentence. Sidestep away. Kikis with the Glacial Prison. Looking to set something up. Walk straight over Fnatic Ward though. So yes, they've cleared the second bush. But Fnatic well aware of his position. Look at Huni getting bullied away by Vezichachi. Level advantage, farm advantage. All that HP on mana. Febivan. Very good trade in the middle lane, in fact. Putting some damage into Power of Evil's Oriana. One of the problems for this top lane Shivana is you need to get your Skirmisher Saber. You need to get that Cinder Hulk before you really can take advantage of your Smite. So in the early trades, it's been so heavily in favor of Visichachi, and he's using it, forcing a TP. So if Dragon gets started by the Unicorns of Love, they have everything needed to secure it. Potential TP, stronger AD carry, and the bottom lane consistently being pushed in. They're starting it here. If Fnatic goes down to contest it, they will end up dying, or at least be forced to flash away. They shouldn't be able to stop them, and the Unicorns will get it. They definitely prefer... Oh, the Shockwave connects on the Fevervin, but that Magic Shield blocks so much of it. Dragon number one, secured by Unicorns of Love. There's a charge, he jumps on the Huni in the top lane. Dragon's Descent, available but not needed. 
Huni did pick up that Cinder Hulk on his last back, so he's in a good position. Quickly take a look at Power of Evil. He gets caught out by Rainover. Rainover's got the explosive cask available, and here comes Fevivit. This is going to be first blood. Fevivit secures it with the Null Spear. Then they turn the attention to Kickers. We do see the body slap. Hillisax coming into support. Glacial Prison connects with two. The Death Sentence connects on Fevivit. The Yellow Star flashes over the wall, throws up the tornado to it's keep them alive. Here comes Chachi. He's looking for a target. He's found it. Now we can turn to Rainover. Does not manage to connect with the Arcane Smash, but Kickers can. Can he ride that Poro in? Chachi's going to decide to back away, and I think that was wise. Unicorns of Love, even the first blood with a kill of their own. One to Cassidy, one to Maokai. Yeah, one to Cassidy is important. Look at Chachi here, not going back to defend his top lane tower. Wanted to force this bottom lane so they can now take Vardax to the mid lane instead. See if they can get another tower. What Fnatic can do as a response is you put the Cassidy on the bottom side lane to just sit and try and farm, and you take Steelback and Yellowstar in the mid lane to try and hold them off in the 2v2. If they don't do that, Unicorns should be able to secure another tower fairly easily in that mid lane. First step is going back and then defending the wave coming into a tier 1 bottom though from Unicorns. See if they can follow that step-by-step -step process. But for Unicorns, good start. Despite giving up first blood, they thwarted Huni's invade. They did well in the 2v2. We still yet to see Vardag's backing. Despite him securing that bottom lane tower, we do see Rainover hovering around. And Hillisang roaming to that middle lane, anticipating some potential uh, aggression. We've also not seen Steelback back for a while. We need to see how the itemization difference plays out. He's just waiting for that BF sword. So you kind of have to put you in such an annoying situation if you go back the first time without 1550. You simply just get forced to play so much more passive and sit back. Chachi here, he might get collapsed on. A lot of members from Fnatic coming in as he's trying to clear that buff. Notice how everyone from the Unicorns is around the mid lane. Steelback isn't here. He's the only one who's going to offer any decent sort of wave there together with the Kragas. Rainover is now in position to let the barrel sit for a while to get proper damage. But well, this looks like it should be an uncontested tower to fix you Yeah. Although, Fnatic, they are relatively close by. This descent is available. Where's the cost from Rainover? Gotta kill that tower. Descent is connects. Tower does go down. Hooney does not actually get caught by the flame. Looking for the shock. And that's a prison. It's a shockwave. Three members of Fnatic lose their HP bars. We do see Hooney being chased down. They'll command protect onto Kickers as Unicorns of Love are chasing them. Super Mega Death Rocket is not enough. And Fnatic lose three members as Unicorns get a tower in the kills. And she, as a coach, can be so happy. Unicorns of Love did everything right here. They followed the plan, take bot tower. Then we go mid versus the Cassidy. And we took that tower and got the perfect fight right after. Notice how they're still focusing it, even though Fnatic is jumping in. So they take it down. Now it's an even fight. Shivana, Salty doesn't manage to hit anything. And three guys together, Kickers gets them. Power of Evil gets them. And now it's in the favor of Unicorns. Also here with five members way before Steelback even joined. And that was just perfect. And that's how you get a goal lead. When your AD carry gets a better back timing than the other ones, and you're against the likes of a Cassidy. What a fantastic fight for the Unicorns of Love. 3-0-1. Righteous Glory completed for Visit Chachi. He can single out anybody that he wants. And Fnatic are now the ones down on gold. Fnatic is now the team that has to pull this game back. For Unicorns, they do have an outer turret to set their sights on in the top lane. Unicorns, rather, is the team I wanted to say. As you yeah. can see, Hillisang and Vardex positioning up top. That also stops Huni from invading into the jungle, taking taking some of these camps. So once all outer turrets are gone, that's where Shivana can struggle. Because if you push her into her own tier 2 tower, and you start warding off the enemy jungle, she never gets the option, option to counter jungle. And you can keep her in check. And she needs a lot of time with the Cinderhawk to scale up and become really, really powerful. And she has some, some sort of weird scaling because her damage right now is fine, but then her damage late game goes down quite a lot, but she becomes really, really tanky. She just struggles when it comes to getting into the fights then, unless she gets the right flank, because you can always see her, you know she's going to ult in towards you. You can even flay her back with Hillisang if he times oh, it correctly. They want that's, that's three members of Unicorns of Love. She jumped right, right. No, right he didn't. Glory's available. It's only rank one on that Rift Walk. It's still five or six seconds. Cooldown. He does manage to make his way out. 
Unicorns of Love unable to find the target. They do get that top tower as Vardax is left uncontested. And look at the numbers. Unicorns now moving on to the inner turret. Steelback is a year and a half away. He's not going to be in place to defend. They're going to go for another one. There's no response. The jungler's just been warded off. The Shivana's been pushed back. And Fnatic are trying their best to hold the tower. They will defend it for now. If the Unicorns stay around, they can just follow in with the next wave because Steelback is still quite far away from this bottom lane. Chachi is going back to catch it. He has teleport ready. Worst case, always have to respect the Jinx if he gets onto that tower. So no mistakes from Unicorns. They do not dive. They do not misplay the Siege. And when Fnatic were able to defend the inner turret, defensive peel away. Unicorns are 4k gold up at 15 minutes. Infinity Edge finished for Vardags. Athenes and Sork Shoes for Power of Evil. Febivin still stacking that Rod of Ages. Only had it for a couple minutes. And we'll need to see how long it'll take Febivin to become relevant in this game. A long time. As well as that, as well as that Shivana. Again, a top lane smite champion in the EU LCS. The early game was thwarted, and as you've you know, touched on in terms of tankiness and damage, and da -da 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 -da, we'll need to see who he throws that challenging smite onto. I just yeah. don't like it, to be sure. I can hear that. I can hear that. <laughs> well, he's starting to get some good trades with Chachi. He does have that percent damage and the challenging smite with the true damage as well for himself. So that's good. That's what they can play around still from Fnatic's side. They just gotta worry about the other lanes because look at the Unicorns here. By leaving Chachi on his own, if they want to send two or three guys to kill him from Fnatic, well, they open up either mid or bottom lane. And that's gonna go down because there are four guys here. No wave play yet, no static shift. Steelback needs quite a lot of time before he can take down the waves with the rockets. And Unicorns love always looking to just chip away on these towers. Huni will get a top tower. That's good for Fnatic. Still sticking around bottom. Visit Chachi's got teleports available. He's going to start using it onto the Siege minion. Whoa, Fnatic rain over. Trying to def uh, defend this tower. Rain over gets a little bit caught out. That's a flash death sentence that does not connect. Flay pulls rain over back. Look at Feather Shockwave Shockwave does not manage to get anywhere. The Glacial Prison does. We do see Visit Chachi going forward. The Ventral Maelstrom does get a good pop onto people. The power of people's low on mana. Keep your eyes on Bardax. He's got a lot of damage and a lot of HP. He manages to get the first kill onto Feather now landing, auto attack after auto attack. The half dragon wiper and hoodie is trying to run down unicorns. The oh, another one! Down. That's another one. It's Power of Evil. Get the mana back. Thanks to the Athena Holy Grail. Kickers flashes forward. And thanks to the attack and dissonance, it's Power of Evil that gets the eighth kill of the game for the unicorns of love. And with four members down, they set the sights on the inhibitor turret. We could see what Fnatic tried to do here. They wanted the TP from Shivana behind and then start a fight under the tower. But it was just rain over on his own and the unicorns of up after failing to get a kill at first they just kite back kite back and hill sang with the hooks notice the way he catches febivan first and then the gragas later so look at this here reno he's going to try and fight on the tower because they know who he's gonna tp in he's going back to base at first so it's a little bit too early for fanatic and they take a lot of damage for it here's the tp behind if you look at your minimap near the blue buff shockwave missed completely from Power of Evil, and now Unicorns realize, okay, we have to suddenly start kiting back. We have to respect the Shivana, who's been diving our backline. Look at Hillerson, catches Febivan. That's kill number one. And Vardax, keep jumping around. Shivana can't really get onto him. The rest of Fnatic can't do anything either. Second hook from Hillerson coming in after the kill onto Huni. He even pulls a Grump. That's swag if you get Grump and a Gragas. <laughs> Look at that Grump running around. Oh my word, Deficio used the word swag. Unicorns of love are infecting even mild-mannered Deficio. Eight to one, 7,000 gold. My jacket is too big anyway, I gotta say something. Four towers <laughs> to one. And the Unicorns, they want to make it five games. They still need to close it out. They still need to push through to the Nexus. But here. if they do, it will be semi-finals, third place and finals all going to five. They're going to set up a trap. Febivan and Huni together in a tree, fighting. Can they get him down? Well, Vengeful Maelstrom is ticking away. Visit Chachi does not have flash. And 
to know. And now your mid lane is in trouble because four guys from the Unicorns are once again pushing. They're so happy just leaving Busy Chachi as bait and being like, you just sit there in the side lane and if they come and kill you, well, we instantly respond by pushing. Febron is gonna see if he can come in from the side. No TP for Huni, no ulti either. I've got Boots, he's running quite It is quickly. enough though to force them away. I'll take a look. Busy Chachi continues to push down that bottom lane. The rest of Fnatic have defended their inner turret. We've just crossed 20 minutes. For the fourth time today, the control has swung. Hillisang, swing and a miss. He's unable to find Reyno back. That's the joy when you build cooldown reduction and Thresh. It doesn't matter if you miss 10. They're up again in just a matter of a few seconds. For him now, he's just hit the 30% cooldown reduction. So 8.4 seconds cooldown on his Q. If you lands it, it goes down to another three seconds. So you can spam that away, and whenever you connect it, you can make sure the unicorns, unicorns will try and follow up and at least get some poke down with it. Well, we will find out. Look at Kikis, he's looking for a Glacial Prison. If anyone from Fnatic groups up, he's jumped onto Rainover. Explosive Cask has been used to push Unicorns away. Hooney does not have Dragon's Ascent yet. We do see Vardex melting his HP. The Shockwave pulls Hooney and Yellow Star as it's Hooney that gets dropped. Unicorns stun up, steal back. Where's the death sentence? Will Hillisung be able to connect? He's looking to wind it up. He throws it and the answer will be no, as the Unicorns of Lab will take the inner turret. Deficio, no team in the European LCS has bounced back from a five thousand gold deficit at 20 minutes and Fnatic was seven thousand gold yeah. down at 20 minutes unicorns they're onto the inhibitor turrets i just love the way they played around barracks on this severe chachi even teleported down sacrificing his own top tower just to get the bottom lane so they could start moving between the lanes get full control get the goalie get the item advantage and we have seen one missed shock with power view the rest has been spot on Five kills for him. I've been. I've Kick been... is on this Sejuani as well. This is a pick he could have taken so many times where he went either for Jungle Nar or Udia in the last game where Sejuani would have fit in so well. I didn't even think he was playing it. And now he pulls it out. Nine assists out of 10 kills. Landed multiple ultis. I'm a fan of the Sejuani. Especially when Kikis is landing such great glacial prisons. Unicorns of Love, super minions at 20 minutes. Steelback has got no attack speed increase, no critical hit. It is going to take so long for Fnatic members to deal with those supers in the middle lane. It should allow Unicorns to have the pick of the litter of whatever objective they want to set their sights on. And we'll see what they decide. For the time being, it looks yeah. to be Dragon, and I think that's a smart call. Take a Dragon first, and then you want that last outer turret in the top lane, and you also want the Baron pressure for them. So the goal should now be to take over that topside jungle, push in the last tier two, and also tell Fnatic that if you can't see us for a while, expect us to be on that Baron, and you have to come and face check us, as we've seen time and time again. And you just throw that ulti from Kekis, and you start a fight on Fnatic. So by them moving up here, they have to go into the jungle, See what other wards they have. I would have liked to ping the two more from Unicorns of Love. They have to go for it. <laughs> Trevor, <sighs> kiss me. Let <laughs> All right, back to the game. <laughs> oh. It's not that kissing you makes me laugh that much. It's just I really did not expect that to fish you. <laughs> Everyone watching, he ladies, didn't do it. He didn't ladies, do it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell we have some uh, NBA fans and NFL fans in the production team because that's the kiss cam on most American sports shows. We now have it in Madrid, Spain for the LCS Spring Split Finals. Unicorns going to start knocking on the inner turret in the top lane. I'm sorry, I don't know how to follow that to this show. <laughs> oh. Right, let's get serious. Unicorns have got numbers in the top. That was an explosive cast used from Rainover. Everybody sidestepped the Feverman eats a hook from Hellasang. That's gonna reset the cooldown. Riftwalk goes in, but Chachi catches Feverman. Shockwave goes out, pulling Hootie backward. This could be the game-winning fight. Death Sentence doesn't connect, but he doesn't need to. The Unicorns are gonna peel backwards, look for the turret. Super Minions pouring through on the middle lane. Once that gets to the Nexus, keep in mind, Unicorns can start taking down any other objective. Steelback throws up oh, the Super Mega. Nice. And he snipes 
down Fardax. That is the turret killing machine down. Good positioning from Steelback to get himself some kills on the board. And we do see the unicorns now peeling. Explosive cost not there, but Vizichachi goes for a long range. Twisted advance. Vizichachi now being hammered on from Steelback, but there's not a lot of damage. He's relying on an Avarice Blade and an Infinity Edge only. Despite losing Vardax, Unicorns get the turrets and they start to knock down the next piece of Fnatic's base. We just have to say it, flawless game from the Unicorns a lot. And they did the same against SK Gaming in Game 1 and Game 3. It was near perfect for them. I believe even won the games, they didn't even give a single kill to SK Gaming. So when this team gets a good start, they really seem to know, okay, where do we move next? How do we take advantage of this situation? This game, they showed it perfectly. And Fnatic, after having their Hectorim game in Game 3, after running with so much hard engage beforehand, they changed it up with the Shivana pick top lane. It was very clear what the strategy was. They wanted the option of either 1-3-1, with Shivana top lane, or also just have a strong late game team fight. They just never got there because of a disadvantage, first of all, in the bottom lane. Honestly, also for Huni, with not getting that blue buff. So, side lanes fell behind. Kassadin could only sit in his lane and farm and not really do anything. It was just a matter of time before he was going to be the next target. And then Unicorns just outplayed Fnatic in team fights. Well, they'll have more outplay potential as Vizichachi's got teleport available and he's pushing down the bottom lane. <laughs> we touched on how Maokai's not going to be able to deal with a split push threat from Fnatic. But Maokai is the split push threat. <laughs> I mean, when you're, when you're thinking all ahead, you don't really care about that one. Fnatic tried to kill him a few times, but every time they did, Unicorns were just in position to get a tower somewhere and it backfired completely. Now, Oh, here comes go Rainover. For the that was a well timed teleport as Vizachachi has managed to get in. We do see both Vardex and Power of Evil focusing down the inhibitor. Dragon's Descent is available, but on the hunt gets thrown out. The Righteous Glory as well. Unicorns of Love have done enough to push Fnatic away from the objective. And I think they got what they wanted. Super Minions now pushing up top lane and outside of damage. the Sivir Ultimate. They still have a lot to work with. Glacial Prism from Kickers. Where will it go? Huni, a defensive run. Feverbin and Huni both get caught up. Sapling lands for touchdown. Yellowstar with a super early monsoon. We do see the Shockwave connecting onto Rain over. But you know what? When you get him down, you can get another inhibitor. Unicorns of Love are pushing another playoff. Best of five to the fifth game. We have never had playoffs this exciting. And there is no way to predict what these teams will do in another fifth game deciding match. It's just a perfect story here. Unicorns are fanatic against each other in Madrid in front of so many Ilisang people. Did it again! Vizichachi catches Feverbin out. He goes down once more. Power of evil and the Unicorns of Love will drop the fan favorite Huni. Take down their third inhibitor. and set their sights onto the Nexus turret. 0, zero 15. James Bond 007 ain't half as good as Hillisang. And the Unicorns of Love take us to game five, ladies and gentlemen. The European LTS Spring Split is going the distance. It's just insane. I mean, we go game five between these two teams. I don't even know what's going to happen anymore. So last time Fnatic went blue side, that was the Hecarim first pick. That's not going to happen again, by the way. It's not going to be a Rex side ban. It's going to be Hecarim. And Unicorns might try and run somewhat, somewhat the same style here. If they can get the same advantage in the laning phase. Dude. This was an individual <laughs> performance, and then it turned into teamwork after from them. Do the Unicorns of Love Surprise everybody and do something weird and wacky and wonderful. You don't have to just play on standard. red side. It, they so have counter pick. Yes, but you don't have to suddenly pull out a team. Or do you think they it will? It doesn't have to be that crazy. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because it's <laughs> unicorns of love. But you have shown in a standard setup, no jungle nar when Sejuani is open, <laughs> and you play like this if your kick is. Aim for that kind of comp. You don't have to surprise.
Because you are a great, great team playing normal as well. Near flawless execution from Unicorns of Love Couldn't in game four. Couldn't Their back's against the wall, a loss. They've got them second place, but now Unicorns and Fnatic. One more match to figure out who will be crowned the Spring Split Champion. We're going to find out from our analysts what they thought of game four and pulling it all the way to the end. I thought you were going to say we're going to find out for an analyst who's going to win. <laughs> who knows? But you know what? We had expected it. We should have expected it. A game five in this series. And I like to go on what the Fischio said. You don't have to pick anything out of the ordinary when you can pick something that makes such great team fights and you play them so perfectly. Yeah, and that's exactly what the Unicorns did. They pulled out the greatest cheese that they could have possibly pulled out. To quote a very famous StarCraft caster, sometimes if you go the standard way, that's the greatest cheese. So. <laughs> No one expected the Unicorns to go standard. They picked it. They picked Matter Champions. They picked the like a, a, a composition that made just sense for our team fight, objective control. They played it out perfect. Nothing at all. Nothing un, out of the ordinary. Just standard picks, standard performance, and they beat Fnatic. It was just standard incredible. game five. Yeah, and they worked really well together. Like they played it really well as a team. Uh, I was keeping track of the kill participation. The last team fight, I wasn't able to check out the numbers, but for the almost the entire game, it was 90% plus for the entire team. Everyone was contributing to all of the kills. There was no standout individual performance. It was just unicorns of love stepping up and playing great. They moved around the map well. They gave very little to Fnatic. They had very few kills at the end of the game. And it was just amazing. Uh, yeah, you do mention it was an individual skill that mattered, but I feel like if you're going to pick a comp where you have to hit those team fights perfectly, you do have a lot of trust in yourself and your individual capabilities, especially going into a game where you could possibly be eliminated from the playoffs. Especially after the games they had before. Yeah. Game two and three, they were, for the Unicorns, horrible. They tried some stuff out, something that they tried before, and it failed. So the mentitude that they go into this game has to be, oh guys, if we lose this game, we're out, the season is over. What do we do now? And then you have to have the nerves to pull out the standard composition and win the whole thing. Vivi Chachi is a player I want to point out especially. He played Irelia, he got camped like crazy. He fell out 0-5, 0-6, gave up like 10 kills in that game. And now he pulls off a perfect uh, Maokai performance just out of nowhere. You have to have those nerves to play a five-game series. Yeah, and in the elimination game, like you were saying, uh, some coaches and some players like to suggest that when your backs are against the wall, you play something that's hard to mess up. They played Sejuani, Oriana, Thresh. Very skill shot dependent. You're in that high pressure moment, and they were hitting everything. That was so much fun to watch. Yeah, just ask X Smithy. You can miss those Sejuani alts, but Kikis didn't. Let's pull a replay up on the screen where, as you said, they just made everything happen and they did it perfectly. And when you have a combo like that, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, so they're in here on the mid siege on the first tier tower and they're grouped up and uh, Fnatic is not in the right position. So if we can run this replay here, they're just trying to break down this tower. Uh, they're pushing up to make sure they can get the zone. And Gregus has no E, he has no more mobility left. They land the hook, kite back on Huni, and here comes the glacial, pr glacial prison into the shockwave. Just so beautiful, does so much damage, locks up the team with the CC, they have no time to respond, and Fnatic just has to get out of here. But it's gonna be too late. The run down on the Huni, and just the teamwork, and everything that UOL is doing here is just so good. I just love watching this. Oh, it's a sight for sore eyes on that hit. Yeah, up until this point, the game was totally open. And then they suddenly decided to siege the mid lane turret. And if I, as a coach, had to paint a mid lane siege with that composition, that's how it looked like. Exactly it was like just that. Exactly. Yeah. It was a uh, beautiful indeed and power of evil now on the Oriana, something again that was a little bit more scaling. You wanted to extend on that a little bit because he hit a lot of shockwaves this time around, and it was really nice to see. He missed like one out of 15 or something. That was count. just an amazing, I didn't count either. It was just like a close per, a close to perfect performance on, on that Oriana. And that's one thing that we really have to point out. Power of Evil is a known assassin player. He's known for playing Syndra. He's known for playing LeBlanc. He's known for playing Ari. Not lately though. Not lately though. And that's the point I want to point out here because Suddenly, you have to think about the possibility to ban out those late game damage control champions for, for him. It's not only banned on the Zyndra, but now you have to take into consideration if you ban the Orianna or the Kogma, something that we haven't seen today and he can pull out any day. Yeah, he has shown the flexibility uh, going on throughout the playoffs and towards the later end of the, uh, the season that he's able to 
He's able to play the champions that uh, his team asks him to play. And he is an experienced Oriana player. He has many games of solo queue played in Oriana, and it shows. He's able to bring Oriana into his team play, into the LCS finals, and put on an amazing performance. Yeah, and you should usually argue when you know that the player has such a big champion pool, it's not worth banning out. Fnatic sticking with their same three bands, Cassiopeia, Morgana, and Annie throughout the entire series. Do you need an adaptation from them there, or is that not working? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, the top lane smite Shivana was something that hasn't worked out. I, I believe that Huni is not the player to pull out that composition. It has to work. Like, I said it in the semifinals. They have to have some scrim results where it worked out perfectly for them, so they still stick to it. But in this in this case, it just didn't work. He got bullied around by a Maokai in lane, and that's something that should not happen in this situation if you want to make an impact on the game. And once they were brewed up, Shivana had no impact on the team fight as well because he was just ulting into a shockwave, and that's something that you don't want to do, <laughs> no matter what you do. The Hecarim works for him, the Rumble works the Rumble. for him. Rumble, that was open here. The Vladimir works for him. Yep. Why do you pick the Shivana top lane with this smite tactic? I don't see the reasoning behind it. Yeah, I want to see him return to more of those styles of champions. That fits uh, who needs to play style a bit better. And yeah, if I think maybe Fnatic looking at the next game, I think they should move away from the Shivana. Yeah, we'll see what they decide to go with, uh, giving Huni. The pointers to maybe go on that Vlad, go on Hecarim. Let's kind of look to a couple of other lanes because we talk so much about Power of Evil and Huni in the top lane and um, Rain over as a jungler. He is so central to that, but here he wasn't able to put it down. I do feel like he's, he could still be the absolute key in the next game. Get those pressure down on the right lanes because that's also what got them rolling before. Rainover was the key element of the Fnatic wins in game two and three. He was the one putting on that early pressure and just controlling the vision control, controlling the pace of the game, setting up his lanes and bringing them ahead, which ultimately led to the Fnatic team winning those team fights. In this game, he wasn't able to have such a big impact because you have those lanes who are fairly hard to gank. So if you pick a Maokai top lane with a Shivana, you have no follow-ups you see in the lane itself, so you can't gank it at easy. He tried to gank a couple of times and Maokai just walked out. That's something maybe you have to adapt. Like maybe try to focus the mid lane, maybe try to focus the bot lane, make some bot yeah, lane. Febbev in last week's MVP, try and get him ahead maybe. Yeah, and uh, the jungler is generally the one that influences the most in the early game. It's your jungler that's going to put you ahead. Usually your jungler also going to, or the enemy jungler is going to put your team behind as well. And even though uh, Rainover is known as a strong carry early game jungler, he just wasn't able to make it connect this game. And when they moved into the mid game or the early mid game, it was the teamwork out of UOL that was able to surpass the teamwork of Fnatic. Yeah, just too crisp of a team play out of UOL, but Fnatic not out of this one yet by any means. I'm not going to ask you to predict anything. We're just going to see. It's all coming down to game five to decide who walks away with the spring split champion. Don't touch that browser. We'll be right back. Death Sentence connects. Tower does go down. Hooney does not actually get caught by the play. Looking for the shock. And that's a prison. It's a shockwave. Three members of Fnatic lose their HP bar. Nice, 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 nice. 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 Nice, 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 n